Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi Puday Leiden. Hello Leiden and welcome to the newest episode of our English speaking weekly show. As you know, our show is about stories, stories of the international community living in Leiden. Today we have two fantastic guests in our studio. We have Talia Lababidi from Syria. Welcome. Thank you. And we have Inge van Dijk uh, from uh, Belgium. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, why don't we start from a very short intro for each of you? Yeah? yeah. What about you, Talia? Uh, well, my name is Talia. I'm 19 years old um, and I live in Leiden. Um, I live in the Netherlands since five years, but I've only been living in Leiden for about um, six months. It's nice, you're new. Yes, uh, so far it's been amazing. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. What about you, Inge? Um, yeah, I come from Belgium, which is uh, pretty much uh, next door. <laughs> um, I live here since five years as well. I came here to study and then I stayed. So how is Leiden treating both of you? Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, me too. Been here for two years. I love it. So, as you know, we have a little tradition in our studio. We usually ask our guests to bring um, objects that have some emotional attachments for each of you. Why don't we start from you, Talia? What did you bring us today? Um, yeah, I brought um, uh, this object. It's the evil eye. Um, yeah, it's very famous in the Middle East. People mm -hmm. usually hang it in their home. and sometimes use it as the jewelry and it symbolizes the evil eye you know like um, is it the, like a protection yes it's a protection thing but for me personally i don't believe that if you hang it it's gonna protect you i just like the thought of it you know and the colors yeah. are very pretty too yeah i love the colors too how do you call it in syrian um and hasad very difficult. <laughs> I won't be able yes, to repeat sure. it. But thank you for introducing it to us. What about you, Eve? What did you bring us? Well, I brought the, um, a really small thing. It's a. Uh, it's like it has a, um, an animal inside. Oh, that is very cute. And uh, my mother. I have two two sisters and a brother. And when we were really young, we were in a market in France. Uh, and the story behind this is that you can open it, tell your worries to it, and then close it, and the next morning your worries are gone. So it's like a, a child thing, actually. Um, and it says inside, I love you. And we chose it when we were, I don't know, maybe five or six. And my mom gave it to me uh, again a while ago. Uh, and she says it's to remind us that she really loves us and uh, that we shouldn't worry. Everything will be fine. Beautiful. Very sim uh, similar um, uh, values behind the yes, objects. Want to protect you, want to uh, help you to get rid of things. Nice. Um, as you know, we also made uh, short videos about your life in Leiden. Uh, why don't we start uh, from you, Talia? Let's watch. Where did you take us? And we see Tahir. <laughs> Talia, marhaba. Marhaba. Welcome to our Syrian house. How are you today? We're fine. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Let's go inside. So, how long you have been in Netherlands? Um, I've been in the Netherlands for five years. Okay, and how did you end up in Leiden? Um, well, I ended up in Leiden, especially for education and um, social life. I yeah, it's a long story actually. What What are you studying? Um, I'm going to study um, next year ICT. That's IT in English. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's why I ended up here. Did you stay in a in a in a refugee camp? How was life there? Uh, yes, uh, I did stay for two months in a refugee camp. Uh, it it was very hard to be honest. Uh, yeah, you you don't feel uh, you don't have that privacy there, so it was very hard. And uh, we did our best to come here. Actually, it took us a very long time. To until we moved to Leiden. So, when you are not working or studying, what you do mostly? Uh, well, I like to do crochet. Uh, I, yes, I do that. I sometimes uh, sports. I like to go on walks. 
Yes, so you are from Halab. Yes. What do you miss most about Halab? Oh, um, the buildings, the people, the streets, everything actually. Do you go out to eat or any yes. any good restaurant that you have been to? You like their food? Um, yes, we do. There's a, a little, not actually a restaurant, but uh, a little shop called Ibn Sham in the central. Yes, he, he makes very good shawarma. Okay. Yeah. And when you are at home, what do you make most of the time? Um, yeah, typical Middle Eastern thing, rice with chicken and uh, veggies. That's, that's what we mostly do. So talking about typical things, is this typical Arabic coffee? Of course, yes. Oh. We, we can't start a, a day without coffee. And what is this? Um, yeah, this is the little dessert. It's made out of, out of uh, coconut. What's the name? Um, I forgot the name actually. But do you really know it? Yamura. Yes, Yamura, yeah. Who I you like listen to much. most in Arabic music? Um, Fairuz and Amka Sui. And this is a nice photo. Is that you? Um, no, that's my niece. Yeah. Ah, yes. and who are these people? Um, these two are my older sisters. Yeah. And uh, one of them lives in Germany and the other lives in Belgium. And these are their husbands. This is my room. Very fresh color. Yeah. I'm a very, uh, how do you say this, a, a very spiritual person. Okay. So yeah, I like doing rituals. I like, um, yeah, my own space. I'm very interested in films and cinema, so... And I think you are too in, too much interested into Keanu Reeves. Yes, that's, that's true. Yeah. I loved your room, by the way, with all the icons. Yes, I, I love it too. Actually, I'm very proud of it <laughs> because I designed everything there. Oh, you so. should be because when I was growing up, the only portrait in my room was a gigantic portrait of our president. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, my dad was a big fan of the... Um, ex-president and we had his uh, portrait all over. You have a way better touch to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned uh, spirituality and uh, rituals. Uh, where does that come from? Well, it comes from uh, self-discovery actually. Like, um, as I said before, I've, I've lived in a town, in a small town, so I spent like almost uh, five years by myself um, yeah, and in that time, I really had to dig more into what I like because the more time you spend with yourself, the more you get to know yourself better. So I had to try a lot of things, a lot of hobbies, and then I found spirituality, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's do this. Let's uh, dig more into it, and I found What really kind of rituals do you do at the moment? Um, meditation. Mm. Um, sometimes I burn incense. Mm. And, uh, yeah, sometimes I turn on relaxing music or something. That's yeah. really nice. Yes. Great. It helps really good with anxiety. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. especially if you're a student. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> Great. Um, let's see where did you take us in here. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. What an amazing place to have a house. Thank you. Yes, I'm really happy to live here. You must be up very early because the, the bazaar is full of people and market. Yeah, I'm lucky that my room is at the back of the house, so I don't hear the the music in the mornings so, and, and the noise. But I actually like it to have uh, people around and uh, live in a busy place. Let's go outside. Yes, come in. Yeah, my roommate really loves to have a lot of plants, so we have a small jungle here of uh, avocado plants and banana plants and everything and uh, a green wall. How did you end up in Leiden? Oh, that's uh, a little bit random actually. My sister was looking at a uh, hotel school in The Hague, which she didn't end up doing. And I was looking for something different in life. Uh, so I started looking to The Hague as well. Then I came to my Bachelor International Relations and Organizations. I thought, oh, that's cool. We don't have this in uh, Belgium. Uh, so then I decided to come here. But then last minute I decided to not come here. <laughs> I went traveling for a year and then uh, after this year I, I still came here. So there's a map behind you. Yes. What parts of the country the world you traveled for a year? Uh, I was in Nepal for a while. Okay. For a half a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked there at an elderly house, like with uh, 
Yeah, I was older people, older people from the street, yes. And then I was in uh, Costa Rica and Nicaragua as well for uh, the, the other half of the year. And uh, there I also traveled a bit and also worked in an elderly house. What is the most interesting part of being a Belgian in the Netherlands? Um, what I find really funny is that people often assume, especially people who are not Dutch, they ask me, how is it for you to learn the language? Was it difficult? But uh, it's actually pretty much the same. We have some words that are, uh, that are different, but in general, it's uh, the same language. So you speak Flemish or? Yes. Oh yeah, my roommate painted it actually. Oh, <laughs> so um, three things uh, that you heard about Dutch people in Belgium, which are not true. Which are not true. Well, they, in Belgium, we always say that uh, Dutch people are very tight-fisted so that, they're, uh, that they don't like to spend money. But uh, I haven't found it really true. I think it's pretty much the same. Like, it's not like my friends don't buy anyone a beer or something. Uh, other things that are not true. Um, well, the most of the other things are true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and what are the things that you found before people find out you are a Belgian about Belgians? Uh, they say we're very stupid, but it's like the common joke that Belgians <laughs> is about the Dutch people and the Dutch people say about the Belgians. Um, and that we eat a lot of chocolate. Very true. This is the country where, where is a lot of, uh, yeah, where a lot of chocolate comes from. That's beautiful. Thank you. It's quite a period environment. Yeah, it's very different because a month ago I still lived in a student house in a 12 square meter room without the living room and I was working from home and uh, studying, eating, all in the same room and now I feel a bit like uh, I live in a palace. <laughs> so I, every morning when I wake up I'm so grateful to, to be living here. You, you were talking about surfing. Where do you find time and space to do that? Well, I, uh, my, my family, uh, they all like surfing. So sometimes my brother comes here and then we go surf together or with friends as well, but mostly with my brother actually. And uh, then we go to Scheveningen or to Katwijk, uh, mostly Scheveningen actually. And in summer we go on a holiday with my family, all surfing. With the... Yeah, so my, my family, we all like to surf. And so every holiday is, uh, is basically a surfing holiday. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> and who's this? This is my boyfriend. He's um, uh, from Leiden as well. Oh, he's local? Yes. How do you meet? Well, I was uh, filming um, mm -hmm. a project with street musicians mm -hmm. and I was actually around the corner here uh, filming a band that was playing on the street and he was uh, making coffee, it was a small market and I really liked him so I thought he was very cute and I went up to him and I said very awkwardly Hey, are you a surfer? <laughs> because he looked like one and uh, I gave my number um, Beautiful uh, room full of uh, plants Thank you. Um, I have a little jungle myself, so I love all the plants uh, as much as possible. Oh, nice. Um, so brave approaching to the guy saying uh, hello. <laughs> yes. I actually don't know if I told this story to my parents uh, like this already, so now, now they will surely know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, but I think it's, it's not needed that the guy comes up to you first. If you like someone, you should feel free to also go there. Absolutely agree. But I still wonder what happened. Like you gave the, uh, the number and uh, did he call back? How soon? Yeah, well, actually, uh, he first thought that I was a surf instructor <laughs> because my profile picture on uh, WhatsApp was also with a surfboard at the ah, time. Okay. So uh, he thought I was trying to get students instead of just um, that I liked him. <laughs> and so he called you? Yes, he texted me in the evening and then a few days later we went for a drink and uh, that's where it all started. That is beautiful. <laughs> that's really nice. Very brave. Very. I wouldn't be able to do that myself. <laughs> you said uh, you came to Leiden for um, social life and also for education. Um, what was your life like um, before coming to Leiden? Where did you live? Uh, well, I lived in a small town. How's uh, it called? Uh, Hirde. Mm, next to Zwolle and yeah I, I can't describe how bad it was actually because um, I've always been a city girl mm. <laughs> yeah I was born and raised in a big city and then uh, when I moved here I had to live in a small town so uh, yeah it was really bad <laughs> um, I had no friends I my neighbors were very racist sometimes mm -hmm. And um, yeah, uh, 
education too. Like um, in Zvola, you don't have uh, universities. You only have um, MBO and HBO. Uh, but here, like you have uh, university, you have it all here actually. I understand. Um, Inge, you traveled at a very young age. Yes. You left Belgium very early. What were you looking for when you were traveling? Um, maybe a bit more freedom at first. Um, and yeah, it's hard to say. I just, I just really felt like I had to get away a bit from uh, where I was and discover new things, uh, learn more about myself as well, learn more about the world, um, try to help a bit uh, as well which is maybe a naive idea at a young age of 18. Um, yeah. Did it work? It, it really did work. It really showed me um, where my passions were as well, what I really wanted to do with life. And uh, yeah, I got to know a lot of great places, a lot of great people, really nice culture. Um, you worked for elderly homes, right? Yes. In both countries. Yes. Um, what was it like? Oh, really hard actually. The first place was uh, in Nepal, it was an elderly home uh, where they came like uh, people who were not really wanted anywhere else, let's say, so really the people from the street. And it was really hard to see how they, yeah, how they were so unloved, actually. Um, and it was not like, it was not a great place either. It was very, it was more like a, yeah, like a barn where they were all put together. So you tried with the little you had to still like give them love and make a good ending, let's say. Absolutely understandable. It's really hard to work in those kinds of environments, especially if you feel like um, you can't change much in their lives. It's very sad. Yes. Very brave of you at, at that young age um, to work in that kind of establishment. Thank you. Um, Talia, sp spirituality, music, you also have a piano, right? Yes, I do, yes. Uh, and very artistic <laughs> touch in general. Um, yes. And you want to pursue um, IT. Why not art? Um, well, I, I think art is very scary to me. I don't know. Like I, I feel it should be more personal. I, I wouldn't want to do something big with it. But um, I'm more interested in computers. And like um, since I was little, actually, it's my thing, um, playing games, uh, fixing problems, everything I do on computers, yeah. And like if I get lost, you'll see me on my computer. <laughs> you find the freedom in there? Yes. Yeah. Understandable. Yeah, you studied international relations, you said, right? Yes, as a bachelor. Um, and then you uh, pursued journalism, Yes, so to speak. Why is that? Um, well, journalism was actually always the plan. Mm. So um, I, want, I would like to do some more international journalism. Uh, preferably uh, like war journalism. Mm. So I did international relations at first to like, let's say, get to know a bit more about political systems and then later learn how to write about it or report about it. Currently you work for um, Leitze Dagblad, I heard. Uh, yeah, actually I, uh, I had a temporary job there, mm -hmm. uh, which is now finished. So I uh, worked there a few months. I did my internship as well there. And now I uh, work as a video editor. Oh, amazing. Did you do um, any research uh, about Leiden, in Leiden, anything interesting? Um, any research, you mean for the paper? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't really say research, it was more uh, daily reporting mm -hmm. or uh, telling stories about people, um, yeah, trying to find uh, ex extraordinary stories. That's nice, were you able to find some? Yes. Like yes. what? Well, my very favorite story is um, of a straatjournaal verkoper. So it's mm -hmm. um, a guy that uh, sells uh, the paper, that's the street journal, uh, street paper. Um, and he had a really, really terrible story, uh, which I read once uh, in a very small paper. And then I brought his story. He was a refugee from, uh, he, he had to, to flee two times. Um, and now he sells his paper as he didn't really have uh, yeah, anything else he could do. He didn't have papers. And uh, I didn't expect it, but the story, his life story, uh, went viral on their students. And uh, so they started a fundraise for him, and now he has a better life. So it's a what small... What an amazing impact. Mm, yeah, it's, it's actually the students who made the, the really big impact, who 
started the fundraise and the story spread maybe the story. in fact <laughs> don't be too modest i read the story as well, oh, really? uh, well through google translation <laughs> um yeah i wish light of that plot would have uh, an english page too but you know it's another story um but it, it was very um strong story i didn't know that uh, i could see him in front of the mm -hmm. uh, supermarket all the time but i never approached and asked about his story so it was really nice uh, to read about it so thank you for sharing it <laughs> Um, Talia, being apart for so long from your friends and family members who are still in Syria and also those who have left Syria and scattered around the, around the world, are you able to connect with them the same way that you used to before? Uh, well, not entirely. Mm. Um, we do call them every, every day, uh, but it's, it's never the same, you know. Um, we FaceTime each other, but... Um, Sometimes uh, even that is hard because some, uh, the electricity there is not stable and uh, they don't always have uh, a connection, a stable connection mm. to the internet. So yeah, you can't rely on that either. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard living there right now. It must be hard. So it has been five years now. Yes. Have you been able to see any of those loved ones anywhere else? Uh, no, actually, Can they travel? it's it's all, it's very hard for them to travel, and it's also very expensive, and they have to take a very uh, complicated road to to go to, for example, Beirut. If you mm. want to see them, yeah, it's it's very complicated. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. No, oh, it's okay. It's fine. I hope one day you yeah, can freely see them again. Maybe we all hope it. Yeah, let's hope so. Um, after leaving Belgium, yeah. Um, now, when you look at yourself, do you feel any difference between Inge before um, traveling and Inge after? Yes, of course, but um, it's also time, of course. Like, it's uh, like you learn new things. You just, before I have to say, I was a very naive person, which mm. was not always great while traveling. But um, yeah, you learn new things, you grow up, and uh, that's, it's a very big change, surely. Definitely. Um, Tanya, you grew up in the times of war. Yeah. Um, if you wouldn't become a refugee and starting this kind of new life in the Netherlands, what your life would be like in Syria? What would Tanya be doing in Syria now, if not war? Um, yeah, that's, that's a nice question. Um, yeah, I think uh, coming to here has changed my life in a way I could never imagine. Um, but Talia in Syria would would be also struggling because or and hard working as well because I know that my friends are having financial issues there and every, basically every family member is there must be working in order to keep the family uh, in a good state mm. yeah so um, I think I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to enjoy my um, teenage days fully there as here. Yeah, I understand. Because you, uh, there you, I think... Um, Is it also because of the culture um, or...? Uh, no, not the culture, but the... the uh, yeah, the... Academia? The situation there. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, it, it's making it very difficult for the youth there to like enjoy their time and be young. Now everybody is worrying about how to get money, how um, to survive, basically. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wouldn't have a fulfilled youth like in Azerbaijan either. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Knowing those kinds of societies uh, have a bit more um, closed up opinion about freedoms of the youth. Is it the same in Belgium? Mm. No, I feel very lucky to come from there. And I cannot imagine how it is growing up in war, so... I, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of respect for you uh, coming here and just starting <laughs> all over, all alone. So Thank you. It's amazing. Definitely. Um, Inge, you mentioned um, in the video about stereotypes of Dutch people yes. and stereotypes about Belgian people. Where do you think these stereotypes come from, if they're not true? I actually, actually not sure. I don't <laughs> know. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Why do we need stereotypes? Why do we need stereotypes? 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a hard I think, question. I think stereotypes um, make it easier for uh, for people to place mm -hmm. uh, others in their uh, right place, but it's actually wrong and very wrong to do. But it's something that our mind automatically does. We, it's very hard to control. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, Talia, can you describe us a day um, in a camp, in the refugee camp? Uh, yeah, normally. What was it like there? Um, yeah, uh, normally you'd wake up like um, in every other place, but um, sometimes you had to do like a lot of checkups mm. and um, maybe uh, sometimes people had to go to. Uh, had to take courses for their language, and uh, yeah, what else? Um, yeah, interviews, a lot of interviews too. Um, in order to get a house, you 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 need to do a lot of interviews and um, health checkups, and yeah, mm. that was challenging. Yeah, very much. Um, there are lots of misconceptions about migrants and refugees in the media, you know, and as a as a journalist um, who has written about life of a, of a refugee in the Netherlands, um, where do you think those uh, misconcep mis misconceptions come from? Um, I think from not knowing. Mm. I think a lot of people don't really um, try to get to know their stories, understand uh, their stories. Yeah. Um, and I think it's also not enough in the media like more personal stories that uh, just to educate people about it and uh, yeah make so them be more um, how do you say it understanding and uh, love loving and welcoming so sharing more personal stories um, putting a face into the challenge and then helping others to understand yes message received <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys it was really uh, uh, interesting talking to you um, about your travel and then also about your life in the Netherlands. Um, coming back to Leiden, we have asked you to um, share photos of your favorite Leideners with us. Uh, why don't we check yours, Talia? Who's your favorite Leidener? Uh, well, my favorite Leidener is uh, a small business uh, or a restaurant owner. Mm -hmm. um, he's uh, actually Syrian and uh, his restaurant is in Centrum. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think he's my favorite because he brings people together. And uh, as we all know, nobody doesn't like food; everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> and when, every time I come there, I see Dutch people, Syrian people, Asian, um, African. Everybody is enjoying their food. So, um, and uh, coming from a refugee background and starting all over here, I have a lot of respect for people that. I have the ability to do that. Thank you for sharing your story as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Inge? Who's your favorite liner? Uh, my favorite liner, it was actually really hard because I think a lot of people make Leiden such a nice place. But uh, I decided uh, on a journalist from Leidstagblad. Mm -hmm. He's been working there for uh, 20 years already. And um, yeah, he was the one who actually taught me everything and who gave me the opportunities to write Bit bigger stories as well to what do my own. What is his name? Team. Wilfred Simons. Great, thanks for sharing. Yeah, more journals like that to the world. <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, that's the end of uh, another episode with you. Thank you for being with us. Yeah. So, if you are a an international community member living in Leiden, just like Inge and Talia, and you have a story to share with the community of Leiden please email us at helloleiden at slotostad.nl. And apart from the social media, you can also watch um, our show every Saturday at 9 p.m. in two different channels. Um, on Zigo, it is 46, right? On KPN, it's 1421. So please keep watching, sharing. We love comments. Um, we do not receive too many comments from you. So... This is how we understand what you think of us. So please do comment um, and share it with your friends. Have a good evening. See you again.
Hello, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Welcome to Leiden. Hello, 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 Leiden.